Now on Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider, Around the NBA. We'll take a look at a Sixer who's been around the NBA for 18 seasons. If you think that you, you're an older player and you can't play this game, you should just be home sitting in the rocket chair watching this game on TV. We'll also check out a Sixer opponent who's no longer playing and who's left his old adversaries. Kind of sad. Sad that that uh, guy that bought the best out of everyone is now gone. And we'll look around the NBA to see what's happening and what people are saying as the new season gets going. I'm John Gurevich, your host for Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider. Our November show unfolds in just a moment. Kids 16 and under on Friday, November 26th, and you'll get an awesome Sixers backpack courtesy of Gatorade absolutely free. Enjoy your Thanksgiving weekend and see the Sixers take on the Golden State Warriors. Call Ticketmaster at 336-2000. Welcome to the November edition of Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider. Good to have you watching. Our theme this month is around the NBA. The season is underway. Things are beginning to shake out a little bit, and now seems like a good time to see what's happening around the league for the 93-94 season. To get things started, we present this month's Insider Quiz, and on the subject of around the NBA, we went back and looked at the Sixers' record against each of the other teams in the league over the last five years. The criteria we're using is winning percentage against each opponent. And the question is, over the last five years, against which three teams have the Sixers fared best? The answers to the quiz coming up later in this half hour. Stay tuned. Well, one Sixer who has been around the NBA, and the ABA too for that matter, is Moses Malone. Moses, of course, is back in Philadelphia this season, and we have an insider look at the much-traveled center from John Slobotkin. Opening night at the Spectrum was like a 76ers time warp, where the franchise's future came face-to-face -face with its past. Yesterday's savior has become today's mentor. Yet after spending over half his life in professional basketball, Malone's makeup is unchanged. If you think that you, you're an older player and you can't play this game, you should just be home sitting in a rocket chair watching this game on TV. But I, I don't think like that. I think I got this material to still play this game. 19 years ago, Malone's jump from high school to the ABA was the first step on a storied basketball journey. In the nine seasons that have followed, Malone always defied classic basketball logic. He is not seven feet, 300 pounds, void of a kangaroo's leap or a deer's swiftness. But every tip, every block, every board is pure Moses. There are no scales or tape measures for desire. Now, at age 38, he returns to the place he is known as a champion teaching this impressionable core of Sixers what it takes. I want them to learn uh, just his, his demeanor, his uh, professionalism, his work ethic, how he just goes about it and gets it done. Doesn't go through a lot of alibis, doesn't go through a lot of excuses, he just gets it done. 11 years ago, it appeared the 76ers might never get it done, it being win an NBA title. Each playoff loss brought with it the possibility that Julius Irving might never wear a championship ring. But after the 1982 season, Moses Malone became a free agent. The Sixers signed him to an offer sheet which Houston matched, but then traded him to the Sixers. Seemingly, the final piece was in place. It was a very bold, aggressive move. Harold Katz engineered it. He's the one that had the, the real vision of doing it. 
and we went ahead and did it. It was controversial at the time, very upsetting to a lot of clubs. I think, what did we pay, $13 million over five years? I mean, it was a huge deal at the time. But Moses was worth every penny of it. Petersburg High School of Virginia center man over to Moses Malone! His dream season included over 24 points a game. The league's top rebounder, first team all defense, his third MVP award, and of course, the coveted place atop the NBA mountain. Moses indeed led the Sixers to the promised land. With expectations established at the highest of levels, neither the Sixers nor Moses could ever reach those heights again. Despite solid numbers over the next three seasons, they never made it back to the finals. Malone spent his last days as a Sixer on the bench with an eye injury. He was traded to Washington in June of 86, but his tank was nowhere near empty. Only one word that could describe him, and that would be relentless. Moses with Jeff Rulon. On the run. Rulon should know. He was on the other end of the Bullets trade and spent many a night battling Moses for paint supremacy. He just kept pursuing the ball. I mean, that's, that's you know, rebound is about getting position and wanting the basketball more than the other players. A lot more bigger players than he, than he in the game, size-wise, jumping ability-wise. He wanted the basketball more than they did. What followed was seven seasons with the Bullets, Hawks, and Bucks. Malone always keeping the ball alive until it was his. Back surgery kept him out of all but 11 games last season, but Malone brought his work ethic to the rehabilitation process. This summer, with the Sixers looking for a backup to tutor young franchise center Sean Bradley, Malone again appeared to be the perfect fit. Sean could only benefit from the presence of Moses, and I, and I use the presence in a very broad sense. You know, Moses' uh, demeanor, Moses' competitiveness. Moses' technique, uh, Moses' rebounding ethic. I mean, you know, so many different areas. Uh, so you, you put all that together along with the fact that Moses is one of the most popular players to ever play in Philadelphia. And uh, it just, to me, it was uh, a no-brainer. In the season's debut, Moses flashed the paint and flashed us back. Moses stepped in at the center position and threw in the offensive point of it and played incredibly well. And so, and we came together as a team and got a good win. Oh, uh, Charlotte looked good. You know, he did a great defensive job. He 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 stopped all the traffic from coming in, blocked a lot of shots. And uh, and that we need from the big guy. You know, he he going to get better when season aggressive. Uh, and we want, and and with him and everybody else, we won this ball game. Lesson number one is now history, with 81 more to follow giving Malone the opportunity to influence the future as he once did the past. Coming up next on Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider, notes and quotes from around the NBA. In fact, in my perfect world, we would take whatever the amount of money is for our total payroll, I'd like to put it on a table, bring in 12 guys, 12 players, and say, okay, guys, here's $20 million. You decide how you're going to divide it up. Travel One, business and leisure travel professionals serving the Delaware Valley for more than 25 years. The guaranteed lowest fares and the highest quality service. For a location near you, call 1-800-676-TRIP. Travel One, no one does more. I took diet pills. I lost 34 pounds. Six months later, the weight came back. That's when I decided to get off the diet roller coaster and get on a Nordic track. In fact, Nordic track is so easy to stick with that after five years, seven out of 10 Nordic track owners still use their Nordic track skiers an average of three times a week. It's been more than two years. The weight's still off and I'm still on my Nordic track. You should give Nordic track a try. Call now for a free video and brochure. Take weight off and keep it off. Nordic Track introduces the Weight Loss Satisfaction Guarantee. Research shows that Nordic Track's total body workout burns more calories than exercisers that only work your legs. Discover what numerous customers have found. With regular exercise on Nordic Track, you can take weight off and keep it off. And we're so confident you'll lose weight too, we guarantee it. We'll guarantee that you'll lose at least 10 pounds in 60 days or your money back. Call now for a free video and brochure. Ask about our 60-day Weight Loss Satisfaction Guarantee. So, who do you think is going to win the NBA championship this year? New York, Phoenix, Seattle? 
or maybe you have one of the dark horses in mind. Well, Tony Irving has been following the NBA for PRISM for several years now, and Tony checks in here with his notes and quotes as the new season begins to unfold. En route to New York City, where the sky is clear, but the traffic is not. After a half hour wait just to get through the Lincoln Tunnel, I reach my destination, Madison Square Garden. Spike Lee and A.C. Green are discussing the governor of Arizona, while Barkley fills up a reporter's notebook. Well, I think I don't mind conforming to a certain point, but if somebody asks me a question, I'm not going to tell a bold face a lie. Sorry, Charles. No lies in this show. In search of some truth, I found Charles Oakley and a healthy respect for the Chicago Bulls' Horace Grant. Horace better than Buck Williams. Horace, he's a 6'10 guy, agile. You know, he, he can do things. He can check small forward, power forward, and, you know, he can come over and help and block shots. And, you know, he's just he's one of a kind. I think that uh, other guys in his league don't do the what he can do on defense. And uh, that's something he, you know, he specializes in. His offense coming around in years to come. This year, it's going to be a big year because Michael retired. So he's going to step his offensive game up and help the team in a more asset way. Huh? A more asset way? And I thought I took license with the English language. In the meantime, Suns owner Jerry Colangelo, concerned about escalating salaries, says he doesn't have a license to print money. I personally would love to have a salary cap for rookies, and I'll tell you why. I'd rather pay the veterans. In fact, in my perfect world, we would take whatever the amount of money is for our total payroll, I'd like to put it on a table, bring in 12 guys, 12 players, and say, OK, guys, here's $20 million. You decide how you're going to divide it up. Speaking of division, Suns coach Paul Westfall says Charles Barkley isn't divisive. But you're better off not taking him at face value. I mean, as long as you don't take Charles too seriously, uh, you know, there, there's no greater entertainer that, I, that I've seen. I mean, he can, he can keep you laughing, whether it's on the airplane or in the locker room before or after the game. And when the game's on the line, he'll go out there and bust his butt. I mean, what else can you ask for in a guy? Michael Jordan used to be the guy, but he's no longer in the league. Much to the chagrin of Suns guard Dan Marley. A little disappointed because you know they they are definitely the world champs and uh, we wanted to go through them to win the championship and obviously they're not going to be the same team without him. I think they're going to be a good team, but Michael Jordan is, is the guy you needed to go through if you wanted to win a championship. And being an athlete, I always want to play against the best, and he was definitely the best. San Antonio forward Antoine Carr says he was driven to be the best by his older brother James at least when it came to dunking the basketball. I used to be one of what we call sweet dunkers, you know, go by the basket real sweet and dunk it light. And uh, he came inside and he dunked on me real hard one time. He said, hey, this is the way you do it. And it kind of unnerved me a little bit so I wouldn't go after his dunk anymore. Mm -hmm. And then I came in, I said, wait a minute, I got to start doing this. And I started noticing that I came down lane and I throw down hard on somebody, that lane would start opening up wider and wider. So I said, well, I'm going to have to do this all the time. Uh -huh. New York General Manager David Checkett says don't ask too much of Sean Bradley, at least not too soon. Checkett's worked for the Utah Jazz while Bradley was still in high school. I watched him block about 16 shots in one quarter, and every one of them into the stands. I think the other team ended up scoring 8 or 10 points in, in one half. So, you know, he's a dominant kind of a player. I think the people in Philadelphia have got to be careful. Uh, they can't expect him to deliver the franchise or, or uh, uh, get you into the finals right away. You've got to be a little bit patient with him, but he's got some toughness. He's got a lot of heart. He's really got some skill, and given time, he's going to be a real player in this league. Again,
Yeah, I gotta be happy with it. I mean, each, each and every night you're gonna come out and there's gonna be things that are going for you and there's gonna be things that aren't going for you. Tonight, offense wasn't going for me too well, but defensive, defensively, you know, the shot, shot blocking and, and uh, shot alterations were going real well. I didn't sleep hardly at all last night, but I didn't think anything about basketball. I just couldn't sleep. <laughs> it was too hot in my house. Not nervous? My wife turned the heat up too high. If only things had been so simple for Michael Jordan. The Sixers talk about Michael when Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider continues. I remember so many times, uh, first couple days of practice, and Kevin and I were standing on the opposite sides of the floor, and Michael would make a move, and I look at Kevin, he'd look at me, we shake our heads. This month's program is sponsored by Travel One, the official travel agency of the 76ers, with offices throughout the Delaware Valley for all your business and vacation travel needs. Travel One guarantees you the lowest fares, the highest level of service, and no surprises. I need a hero, fast and strong. But people tell me all the heroes are gone. I've heard of a place where the heroes play. They do the impossible to save the day. I still believe in heroes. Tell me there's no heroes anymore. I still believe in heroes. heroes. Prism. If you haven't seen us lately, you haven't seen us. Welcome back to the November edition of Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider. Still to come, the Sixers talk about Michael Jordan plus the answers to the Insider Quiz. Right now, Superstar, our monthly segment on a Sixer opponent of note. This month, Carl Malone of the Utah Jazz, who visit the Spectrum on Friday the 19th. Now, you know Carl Malone is one of the NBA's premier players. You may also know he owns his own trucking company. Well, now there's something else to talk about. Sometimes when you watch the likes of Carl Malone, you may find yourself thinking how much fun it would be if you were a superstar. But did you ever realize the superstars sometimes wish they could be something else? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, he's ready. Carl Malone has always wondered about fighter pilots. And in August, he got invited to ride in an F-16 at an Air Force base near Salt Lake City. <laughs> Well, if you think throwing down a slam dunk and getting a standing ovation would get you excited, wait till you hear Carl Malone in the F-16. Now, this is actual footage from the cockpit, and you're hearing him and the Air Force pilot he's up there with. Come on. Pretty neat little airplane, huh? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. OK, you ready? Yep. OK, here we go. We're going to do nine Gs. Oh, hey, here we go. Oh, oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah! Yeah, baby! Yeah! Yeah! Guess what we did? What? 9.3. Hey, yeah! <laughs> yes, baby! Oh. You can take the airplane. You oh, got it. Yes! Oh, hold on. Okay. Oh. Okay, I got it. Eventually, the F-16 comes in for a landing, and afterwards, Carl Malone is still pumped up. Basketball don't even compare to to this right here, not even close. But it was it was like I'm done. Now I might sleep all day because I'm like. <laughs> <sort of. laughs> was that a good workout, Carl? Oh yeah, it was. It was. And you know what? I didn't know a human can just cough by one of these things. <laughs> but we pulled nine Gs, I was coughing, and <laughs> Terry was tough. coughing and everything. I was checking him out to make sure he was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was fine, I was saying if he was all right, but no, it was, <laughs> cause he got a blend this thing back here. 
Now, here's the question now. Does the Air Force let Carl Malone borrow one of those F-16s a second time? No, if they let me join, I'll buy my own. <laughs> Okay, catch Carl Malone in person at the Spectrum when the Sixers take on the Utah Jazz on Friday, November 19th. And, of course, that game will be telecast over on PRISM. Our theme this month is around the NBA. And I think when you talk about the NBA this year, you have to talk about the retirement of Michael Jordan. Turns out that amongst his biggest fans were the other players in the league, as we found out from talking to the Sixers. <laughs> A will not quit, a will not be defeated attitude. He feels it. There's nothing else he can say other than the man feels it and lets us know. Uh, you know, you got a chance to play against, one, like I said, one of the greater players they ever could play. You know? Robinson, Jordan. Oh, a spectacular move. The majority of players will say they had some of their best times and best games against him. Michael Jordan has taken us on an uncharted flight since being drafted into the NBA in 1984, a trip that earned him three NBA titles and the highest scoring average in league history. Fred Carter was one of Chicago's assistant coaches under Kevin Lockery when Jordan was a rookie. Young Michael Jordan. It's been so many moons that's passed, there's so many balls that are going through the hoop since then that uh, time has a way of eroding the memory. But leadership, a willingness to win, uh, a will not quit, a will not be defeated attitude. I remember so many times, uh, first couple days of practice, and Kevin and I were standing at the opposite sides of the floor, and Michael would make a move, and I look at Kevin, he'd look at me, we shake our heads. Two minutes later, another move. A minute later, another move. And his two guys have played, you know, guarded Jerry West, Oscar Robertson, Earl Monroe, and uh, all those guys. And here this guy's doing things that shit making us shake our head. Because he did things that were with an ease and a grace that we had never seen. It became apparent to everyone that Michael had the gift. Rookie of the Year, followed by three MVP awards, numerous scoring records, and most importantly, the three titles. With all that, Michael decided it was time for him to retire after nine NBA seasons at the age of 30. When I lose uh, the sense of motivation and the sense of to prove something as a basketball player, uh, it's time for me to move away from the game of basketball. It's not because I don't love the game. I love the game of basketball. I always will. I just feel that at this particular time in my career, I've reached the pinnacle of my career. Uh, I've achieved a lot in that short amount of time, if, uh, if you want to call it short. Uh, but. I just feel that I don't have anything else for myself to prove. On the Sixers, the veterans say they understand what the loss of Michael means to the game. Uh, kind of sad. Sad that that a guy that brought the best out of everyone is now gone. I don't think that there's a player in this league that can say that their better games probably weren't against Chicago. He brought the best out of you. I mean, they may have won or you won, however it turned out. I think that some people's best games, the majority of players will say they had some of their best times and best games against him. And I think that's because of the person and player he is. He brought the best out of you. Uh, he was the uh, greatest player that you know played during my era. You know, I grew up watching him play in North Carolina, then in the NBA, and getting a chance to be, uh, you know, play against him uh, for a year. You know. I, uh, you know, got a chance to play against, one, like I say, one of the greater players they ever could play. You know, I missed Bird by a year, but, you know, I did get a chance to play with Michael. You can't help but feel bad for the younger Sixers who might never get the chance to match up against a player the caliber of Michael Jordan. He was just an awesome player to watch on television. I'm, unfortunately, I didn't get to see him in person, but I wish I would have. 
One of the main things when I when I got drafted was a long time in mind is to actually play against the best player ever to play the game, and um, it was going to be an opportunity for me, something I was looking forward to. And then to, to hear that he retired and everything, it was kind of devastating because you know I, I I got a lot of enjoyment out of watching him play, and now I don't I don't think I'll ever have the opportunity, or maybe I will, maybe I won't, I don't know, but it's kind of disappointing to see him go. Could this be the first time Michael Jordan will have to look over his shoulder? As he leaves the game, the Bulls find themselves exposed in a league that's looking for an heir. You're always going to have a better man out there somewhere. It may be one, two, three, four, five, maybe 10, 20 years down the road. It's always a better man somewhere. And uh, that is not one of my fears. Because as long as I was playing the game, I believed in myself as a basketball player and certainly as a person. And hopefully when that person comes along and maybe have the impact as a Magic Johnson, Dr. J, myself, Mary, Larry Bird, Charles Barkley, you know, he feels the same way. But it will be another player in that, nat in, in that, that nature. Travel One, business and leisure travel professionals serving the Delaware Valley for more than 25 years. The guaranteed lowest fares and the highest quality service. For a location near you, call 1-800-676-TRIP. Travel One, no one does more. From the city to the suburbs, from the driveways to the streets, they're jamming hard on the boulevard, bouncing to the beat. Your team, my team, your town, my town. Catch Sean Kemp and the Seattle Supersonics when they hit the Spectrum floor on Tuesday, November 30th to take on the Sixers. See Sean Bradley Spoon and the rest of the Sixers battle the NBA's 1993 Western Conference finalists. Call Ticketmaster today at 336-2000. First, there was one Liberty Place. Then they finished its companion, and the Philadelphia skyline seemed set. But the Sixers wanted a high-rise of their own. Meet Philadelphia's newest skyscraper, 7'6 center Sean Bradley. How well can the city's tallest structure play? Find out this season on Prism, in exclusive games you won't see anywhere else on TV. Don't miss a true giant taking his first steps in the NBA. Watch the season unfold right here on Prism, the home court home of Sean Bradley and the Sixers. Time now for the answers to this month's Insider Quiz. All right, our theme has been around the NBA, and we've been wondering about the Sixers' record against each of the other teams in the league over the past few seasons. Our question was, over the last five years, against which three teams have the Sixers fared best? And the criteria is winning percentage against each opponent. Well, the third best is the 20-6 record the Sixers rang up against Washington the last five years, a winning percentage of 769. Next best has been against the Los Angeles Clippers, with the Sixers going 8-2 and two against them, a percentage of 800. And over the last five years, the Sixers have done the best against Miami, winning 18 and losing only three, a winning percentage of 857. The three teams the Sixers have fared best against over the last five years, Miami, the LA Clippers, and Washington. Hey, hope to see you at the Spectrum sometime soon. We will be back with another edition of Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider next month. Thanks for watching.